Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Thursday, March 1st, 2018, episode 36. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yes, of course, maybe a little lulls. And I do have, I only have one lulls for today, but it's a good one. If you're watching on YouTube, you missed the opening of the show. And today, you would have missed me starting the show, getting the show going, and then having my whole computer shut down. <laughs> So the show went black, and then it came back on. So you missed that. You would have seen all kinds of wonderful stuff, behind-the-scenes stuff, and you missed it. And you'll also be missing the very end, which you can only hear if you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon, and the image of the profile matches the image on this show. If you're watching live on Facebook, don't forget to stay tuned in because I will respond to the comments after the YouTube part of the show is over. And I can assure you if I go back and I find no comments, then I promise you that I will release a video of me singing a Donnie and Marie song in which I play both parts and I let everyone know that you were responsible. Just just take that in. If you're watching on YouTube, join me on Facebook so next time you don't miss the full show. Today's show title is, And God Said, Let There Be Light. And we found it. You can get show notes at isheadlines.com or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video or go to istate.tv slash h036. And you can also find our audio podcast show on iTunes and Stitcher by searching for iState. On today's episode of Headlines You May Have Missed, Finger of God, Gun Fear Porn Study Exposed, Steel Tariff Dance, Drugs Are Printed, okay, and more. And whatever you do, if you're watching on Facebook, share this freaking show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. Radio telescope detects the earliest evidence of the first light of the universe. Yes, this is where we get the title for our show. A radio telescope in Australia has detected what is being called the fingerprint of the first light ever to emerge after the Big Bang. The discovery has knocked back the time scientists had previously believed the so-called dark age of the universe ended just after the Big Bang and, of course, just before the first light appeared. And this is from CNN. Scientists detect fingerprint of first light ever in universe. Scientists have detected traces of the earliest light in the universe through th thought to emanate from the first stars formed after the Big Bang billions and billions of years ago. The new report, published in Nature on February 28th, said researchers found the fingerprint of the universe's first light as background radiation left on hydrogen. This is the first time we've seen any signal from this early in the universe, aside from the afterglow of the Big Bang. Judd Bowman, an astronomer at Arizona State University who led the work, said in a statement, Following the Big Bang, physicists believe there was only darkness in the universe for about 180 million years. Holy moly. Imagine if you were like, well, no, but, well, I don't know. If you were living like right in the middle of that 180 million years, you would have thought darkness is eternal. There is no such thing as anything but darkness. And if somebody tried to describe to you a thing called light, you'd be like, are you crazy? Is you crazy? They would probably be certified insane so just think about that the next time you say somebody is crazy because they said something crazy maybe they're not the new discovery is the closest scientists have ever come to observing that moment of cosmic dawn and the discovery was made by a radio telescope in western australia the marchison radio astronomy observatory operated by the csiro 
whatever the freak the CSRIO, whatever it is. It, it did that. Hey, good job, guys. Study shows gun injuries go down during NRA convention. But the study is gun the study is gun fear porn. I'm gonna get it. This is the article that I worked way too long on trying to get research and information on. I'm not gonna go into everything about this article. Uh, you'll have to tune in tonight on Is Daily Thursday for the sound thrashing of the writer of this article that uh, she so d justly deserves, Melissa Healy. I'm not gonna go into that. I just I just wanna I'm just gonna touch on the premise of the article is that there's a study done by the New England uh, Journal of Medicine has determined that when the NRA convention is going on, that the the reports of gun injuries in ERs go down. So I just I just want to break it down for you. Okay. So first of all, uh, the the difference is it went from one point four nine per hundred thousand visits down to one point one nine per one hundred thousand visits. So what we're talking about is. Uh, 12 per million versus 15 per million. So we're talking about a statistical difference that is pretty much negligible. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the convention itself, it it had the biggest, the, uh, the largest number of people ever attended last year, and it was 66,000 people. So... 42% of U.S. households claim to own at least one gun. The average size of a U.S. household is 2.5 people. The population size of the U.S. is 323.1 million people. That leaves us with 127.2 million households. So if we just assume that there's only one person per household in that, that actually owns a gun uh, among the households that have guns, then we can assume... 42% that 53.4 million gun owners exist in America. That means that the NRA convention drew 0.12% of the gun owners in America. That's a little over one-tenth of 1%. 1 so you're talking about an infinitesimal difference. And you were also, by the way, talking about, uh, and even in her article, she, she notes that uh, the, the number of gun injuries reported during a yard is, 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 is very, very minute. So you're talking about minute numbers on minute numbers on minute numbers that they use to try to produce a report to get you to think, oh my gosh. It's the, it's, it's the guns. They're, they're fundamentally dangerous. And I'll just read the headline and I'll leave it at that. The headline for her story is, When NRA members attend their convention, ER doctors see fewer patients with gun injuries, study says. And, you know, most people, all they're going to do is read headlines. And that's exactly what this is designed for. I'll talk more about this tonight, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to the next story. Trump admin pushes back planned announcement about steel aluminum tariffs. So this is our top story on iState.tv today. The Trump administration has not abandoned the intention to impose a new round of tariffs, this time on steel and aluminum imports, but in what could be read as uncertainty among the members of, admi of his administration, a planned announcement for today about the tariffs has been postponed with no rescheduled time announced. And I just want to remind everybody, tariffs are taxes. Just, just remember that. Tariffs are taxes. The tax cutter is talking about a tax. That's, that's what we're talking about. And this, is, uh, this story comes to us. Well, I didn't write down who it's from. Let me let me just check real quick. I want to make sure I got this right. Yeah, this is the Washington Post. President Trump has decided against announcing tariffs on steel and aluminum imports on Thursday after 18 hours of frenetic pushback from inside the White House and on Capitol Hill. Two people briefed on the decision set. Now, this is the Washington Post, so you can take that with a grain of salt. Did that really happen? Who knows? One thing that did happen is that it was it was canceled and there was no scheduled follow-up as far as when these announcements 
are to happen, I can only hope that maybe cooler heads will prevail and somebody with a degree in economics that's not a Keynesian will come forward and say, hey, dudes, you know, this is stupid, right? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not holding my breath, but I'm, but I'm hoping. Yes. Many factories create drug three printing opportunities for hospitals. Thanks to 3D printing, hospitals can manufacture right there in-house medical devices that patients need, cutting down on wait times for specialty devices, as well as significantly reducing the cost. But now, these mini factories, or ones like it, can also 3D print drugs. And one researcher is illustrating how that can happen. Now, this is already uh, happening, and there's a company called Apricia that uh, has, uh, in 2015, had the first 3D printed drug approved by the FDA. And you can see a picture there of their, their 3D drug printer. And this is from, oh man, I forgot to write the thing for this too. Well, that sucks. Uh, yeah, this is from the Irish Times. I want to make sure that I always like to cite the sources once I read actually from the source. So 3D printing set to add mobility to medicine manufacturing. Three-dimensional printing. I'm not going to describe what that is. If you're following iState, you should know by now. And if you don't, shame on you. Using the technology to manufacture medicines is still niche, but interest is there. A 3D printed drug has been approved by the FDA, and researchers are starting to prize open the potential of 3D printing low-cost equipment to build the chem chemicals needed for drugs. One researcher with no so shortage of ambition in this area is Professor Lee Cronin, who has combined his interest in computer programming and chemistry to come up with 3D printable kits that guide the synthesis of specific chemicals. We have developed a 3D printed plastic mini factory, says Cronin, who holds the whatever his grand chair is. He's an Irish dude. All the containers are positioned in such ways that in this plastic block that when you inject chemicals, they can't do anything else but react and give you the drug you want. And uh, you can read more about it in the show notes. And I also include a video of uh, the Fox News report from 2015 about the first uh, 3D printed drug approved by the FDA. Russia blames the U.S. for Turk Reich invasion of Afrin. So the Russians are making it more and more Ten obvious minutes. that their intentions are to continue to enable the rise of the Turk Reich. And, and I haven't seen anybody pick up on that name yet. And I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Come on, man. I don't need to take credit for it. Maybe somebody else already called him the Turk Reich. Somebody is bound to have already called him the Turk Reich. It's such an obvious thing. And, uh, anyway, I, I sure hope that people start picking it up and I don't need credit even if I was first. I just want to see them called the Turk Reich by more people. So, hey, if you're if you're one of the audience members out there and you write, and I do have a number of friends that write, I encourage you, don't call them Turkey. Call them the Turk Reich. A Russian Security Council statement suggests that the people of Afrin we're asking for it. And the U.S. is to blame for the invasion by the Turk Reich. So in other words, the Russians would have you believe that the poor Turks are the victim here of U.S. aggression, giving the bloodthirsty regime of Erdogan a clear message that going forward with the attempted genocide of the Kurds in Afrin is okay with them. And just a reminder... Just a couple of days ago, I said this on the show before, I want to repeat it. This is the same guy who stood before an audience with a, a six-year-old girl dressed in a soldier's uniform, put his arm around her in the Mr. He basically out Biden Biden, and he proceeded to say to her, hey, maybe one day, man, you, you'll be a martyr. Yeah, wouldn't that be glorious if you become a martyr, man? You become a martyr, it's going to be great. We're going to drape a flag over your dead body. Of course, she was crying. I mean, man. so this is, this is who we're talking about. Just keep that in mind. When I'm talking about Aragon, that's the guy that I'm talking about. So U.S. gave Kurds modern arms made Turkey launch Afrin. Uh, this is what the, the Russian council says. And this is from RT. Now, of course, 
RT, by the way, is is Russian uh, agit prop, which you know I'm I'm not going to fault RT for being Russian agit agit pop because prop because most of the U.S. media out here is also U.S. agit prop, but but you could pre if you'd like to you can be selectively outraged at uh, RT being agit prop. Washington provoked Ankara into launching a military offensive on Syria's Kurdish-controlled Afrin by boosting the Kurds with advanced weapons, according to the Russian Security Council. The Kurds are being boosted with advanced weaponry, the deliveries of modern weapons, and encouragement of separatist sentiments among the Kurds have in fact provoked Turkey into carrying out the military operation in Syria's northern Afrin region. The assistant to the secretary of the Russian Security Council, Alexander Venetikov, told Ria Novatsky. No, uh, Erdogan saw an opportunity. He saw some little uh, fear porn that he could rise up and uh, from, you know, amongst his peoples who are frothing at the mouth for the rise of the new Ottoman Empire. And he took advantage of the situation. He assessed the lay of the land and realized that he had folks like Russia that were going to totally enable him, and he had folks like the U.S. and Britain and uh, other European allies who were going to complain a little bit, but they weren't going to really do anything significant to send him a message not to go, and then he went. This is like Hitler moving on Czechoslovakia, except that uh, the unlike Czechoslovakia, the folks in Afrin, they're not nearly as welcoming, and so... He's not just able to march in like Hitler did. Bitcoin exchange glitch opens door for investor to attempt 2.2 trillion yen take. 2.2 trillion yen take. I think that's like $3. I kid, I kid. Hold on. Let me let me do a real quick here. Yen dollar exchange rate. Let's see. Okay. One yen equals uh, wow, not 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 too far off. I don't know. It's a, it's a couple billion dollars worth or something. I can't do the math in my head that fast. So you know, there, there you can see it there. There's the, the the rate of exchange. But if you haven't guessed, this is absolutely this is your moment of lows, your lows of the day. A mistake in an exchange opened the door for a wily investor to attempt to purchase 2.2 trillion yen in Bitcoin. But alas, before the transaction could take place, the mistake or bug was discovered. And I say bummer. Yeah, I say bummer. A failure dude or dudette or differently gendered, fluid gendered, whatever investor. I feel ya. I don't want to say man. I'll say kind. Wait, no, person kind person kind i'll say person kind person the mistake or bug was enlisting the price of bitcoin as being zero and hats off to the investor for trying hats off to whoever realized holy crap we done effed up we must fix this all's well that ends well though and we got a nice little moment of lulls out of the affair and this is from digital trends a Bitcoin exchange bug sees one user to cash out twenty trillion. Oh, wow, there you're saying twenty trillion dollars. What the heck? Two wait, two point two trillion yen is twenty trillion dollars. Man, I must be doing my math wrong there. That is that's messed up. So the the bug in question meant that the government registered Zyphe Exchange had a twenty minute window last week whereby Bitcoin prices were locked at zero dollars for all purchase. Unsurprisingly, many customers took advantage of this flaw and tried to buy up mountains of the scarce digital commodity, only to try and resell it later for an enormous profit. Nobody was quite as ambitious as one customer, though, who attempted to profit more than 100 times that of Bitcoin's entire global market value. Bruh! Way to be, bruh! I mean, if you're going to do it, do it, do it. Once the bug in its system was discovered, Zype quickly voided all transactions, uh, and everybody looked around and said, are you wearing the adult diapers? And everybody looked at everybody, I'm assuming, and they said, why no? No, I'm not. And then everybody looked at everybody and says, well, I guess you're going to have to change your underwear, because I am sure everybody took a little leak in their pants. There you go. That's your moment of lulls. Congratulations. 
I don't know why I said congratulations. Turk Reich launches anti-Greek propaganda using migrants as the weapon. Greece is under Turkish propaganda attack amidst charges the country is sending away immigrants in defiance of previous agreements. The counter to this accusation is that Greece has been forced into a position that it is not being compensated for taking, becoming the main gateway through which immigrants or refugees from the war in Syria enter Europe. The writer of the article from Daily Sabah, a pro-Erdogan publication, is doing his best to stress the victim status of the poor immigrants. No doubt, the writer is part of Erdogan's campaign against Greece and potential, or in preparation for a potential invasion of Greek islands. We covered that story just yesterday, and I linked to it in this story. And I'll just read this 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 part here. Uh, Mustafa Belkacem, a 25-year-old Libyan immigrant, said they secretly crossed into Greece five days ago but were captured there. Police captured and jailed Two us for minutes. a while. Then some men wearing uniforms and masks took us to the military boats. They hit us and told us to keep quiet. They also seized our cell phones before leaving us on the islet, he told reporters. He added that he was not giving any food while in detention. Hmm. I'm, I don't know whether it happened or not. I'm going to say I doubt it. Wearable tech offers less invasive monitoring for people with chronic conditions. Throw away those constant pinprick blood tests. Diabetics can choose wearable tech to constantly monitor their condition. And that's just one of the benefits of wearable medicine, medical sensors being offered for people who suffer from chronic conditions. This is from Print and Electronic World. A new type of flexible wearable sensor could help people with chronic conditions like diabetes avoid the discomfort of regular pinprick blood tests by monitoring the chemical composition of their sweat instead. And uh, you can read more about it. We're running out of time. I want to get these last stories. Le Pen. This is going to be our big story. Another big story tonight. Le Pen charged for posting a favorable tweet about ISIS. And apparently it is now illegal in France to show the brutality of ISIS. ISIL. A, even if you were a pre previous major candidate for a prime minister, uh, Le Pen showed a picture of a journalist that had been killed by ISIS, and now she faces charges and investigation around that tweet. And the person who wrote the story, a member of the so-called free press, well, they took the time to simply excoriate Le Pen. 30 seconds. We're going to talk more about that story tonight. And here is our last story for today. Meet the world's first nanoscale fully automated offset printing system. The next generation of advanced, highly detailed 3D printers was created four years ago with the unveiling of the full operation taking place just this last December. Ten seconds. So, it is fully automatic, robotic, and cyber-enabled. It is three orders of magnitude faster and higher resolution than the current inkjet and 3D printing. The printing process takes place at room temperature suppression. Man. I wanted to I wanted to do more, but man, I can't. I'm sorry. You guys heard the beep. And you know what that means, right? You know what that means. That means that's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you would like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for March 1st, 2018. Or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video, or go to istate.tv slash HO36, and you can also find our audio podcast shows on iTunes and Stitcher by searching for iState. And once you search, be sure you subscribe. They usually show up about three or so hours after I post them. And don't forget to join me tonight on Is Daily Thursday with Lou Sander at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. And the link is in the descriptions for the videos. Tonight's show is called uh, You Keep Using That Word Free Press. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.